My guys, my guys, what's up with you, baby? You know. And so let's say you got all the pieces in play. You got a current woman. She's at the best. She's at the most blank state for you to pour into, for you to paint on, right? For you to bring her into your life, mold her as she needs to be so that she can bind to the process of your progress. Let's say you got these things already in order from your partner. Are you ready for a second wife? But before we get into that, there, let's roll the intro. Love with this dick, yeah. She says she wanna be up on my team, but she can't love me, yeah. Really, she don't wanna man, she wanna wanna gummy bear. Now, before you start considering if you're ready for a second wife, you need to ask yourself the first question, and that's, do you have a first wife? <laughs> and I feel a dumb, you know, mentioning this, but I have to because so many guys I talk to. I ask them this and they are like, well, no, I say, well, bro, listen, let's, let's, let's start at first grade. Cause if you can't make it work with one, you can't make it work with none. I ain't lying to you. If you didn't perfect the one, how are you going to perfect the sum? The issues don't decrease as you increase. They increase with your increasing. How they tell you more money, more problems. When you enter a new uh, a tax bracket, you don't have to pay less money, in theory anyway, unless you're a politician, you have to pay more money. When you enter into an industry and you're making more money, you have to pay more money. So if you stress easily with dealing with one, you may not want to deal with none, let alone some. That in and of itself is going to let you know if you're really ready to start multiplying because here's the other thing too if you got problems with your first one <laughs> when you multiply that woman you can be multiplying those problems you think the mama you're dealing with now is a headache or maybe you found a way to tolerate it maybe you just come home at a certain time maybe you grab you a, a little drink or smoke your little some some you know and that's how you can tolerate your current woman we well, understand when you bring in an addition that's going to multiply. The video we did about if you need to like your wife. No, you don't have to like your wife, but you still have to love her. And when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and it lists off the attributes of love, the first one is that love is patient. Let me ask you, man, do you have patient or patience, rather, for the patient? You knew that the woman may need some help. See, I don't ever fault a woman for not being able to come in and, and align herself immediately with me because the truth is she's never dealt with a man like me before. She's never dealt with a true alpha, don a true man with purpose moving in it indiscriminately with executive impunity. She's never experienced that. Now, you can say what you'll do when you get it, but you won't know truly until you get it. You know, I didn't know what I would do with a hundred thou until I got a hundred thou. I used to just think like, man, if I, if I could just get 40 thou, what I would do. Then I got a hundred thou one day. And that was my first time getting it. <laughs> and a lot of what I said I would do kind of went out the window. I did some of what I was supposed to do with it. But what I'm telling you is that my second hundred thou was a lot better than my first hundred thou. Now, if that woman is coming in, understand she don't have no clue. It ain't nothing that she can refer herself to and how to deal with you because this is her first rodeo. Especially if she ain't came from a family like that. Especially if you and her daddy ain't on one accord because y'all are the same kind of men. Because if she do got a daddy nine times out of ten, he ain't. And that's if, and if it was a fifth, we'd all be drunk, but I digress. So that's the first thing. I don't have a fault of for not knowing how to come in and party though, or two-step with a man like me. Because when she meet me, everything she thinks she know about men, she got to throw it out. Your last relationship, little baby, you was playing soccer. You understand me? You was playing rugby. This is croquette. It's a whole different ball game. You can't tell me how experienced you are because of how many failed relationships you've been in. That let me know how inexperienced you are when it comes to dealing with me. You have more experience in getting it wrong than getting it right. Because if you got it right, you wouldn't be in my side tonight. You'd be with that guy. So knowing that, I don't ever fault the women. We got to give us some slack, man. This is not a bad session on our women. It's a truth session, you know. And in truth, she going to need a little time <laughs> getting used to this new ride, you hear me? So I don't fault her for not being able to come in immediately and aligning herself 
and her steps with me. She got to fill them shoes. She got she to gotta work them out. Even when you get a new pair of shoes that you've been wanting, that fit, they still feel a little funny in your feet. What I do hold the woman at fault for is her telling me that she's somebody and then she's not. If you come and you tell me that you know, you're a domestic type and you're not, if you come and tell me that you can cook and you can't, if you tell me that you're the motherly type and you don't even really take care of your kids like that, or you just started to within the last two, three, four, five years, and these kids are teens and preteens, then yeah, I'm gonna hold you accountable for it. I'm gonna hold you at fault for that. If you tell me you're a clean woman and you like to clean and you like order and this and that, you know, and then you're not, yeah, that's what we as men will hold them for. But not them coming in with the spirit to want to. And they're just getting their food and give her a little time, bro. Give her a little time. No, you got some women who will attempt to tell a man or tell her man what he needs to have in order to have a second wife. And I'm going to tell you like this. Carl, listen, if she was a God-fearing woman, no matter how godly she is, she wouldn't be opening her mouth to tell you anything she's not qualified to speak on. When the last time she was a man? I don't care if she was raised by a village of them. I don't care if she came from any of these Hebrew camps. Whomever. A Muslim community somewhere in, in the Middle East. You ask her, what first-hand experience do you have at being a man? They're in the multiplicity. And she's going to tell you none. And that is the ultimate deciding factor on you being able to stand up here and speak on anything. And if you don't have that, sit down. You know, that's what makes a college graduate and a college professor different. They both got the same education essentially, but one has experience. The other one does not. That's why you can't go graduate college and then immediately turn around to go apply to be a professor. You study two, four, five, six years of archaeology, but you ain't spend that time in the field. Have you managed the project? Have you managed the budget with a 10 member team crew in inhospitable environments? No, you're not experienced. Therefore, you cannot speak. So when your woman starts to tell you about what you need in order to proceed, please take heed and tell her to sit down respectfully. Not a man can do that. And so this is what we're going to proceed to do. One of the things you may want to have, men, is the space to entertain the face. Now, it's not a prerequisite. A lot of people will have you think that you need a big old mansion and all that. I'm going to tell you like this, bro. In these day and ages that we in, these times, <laughs> nah. And then when you look at some of the, the, the state that some of these women are living in before they met you, yeah, no. Even if she was in a three-bedroom apartment and she moved from her three-bedroom apartment to your three-bedroom apartment, you know why your three-bedroom apartment is way grander than her three-bedroom apartment? Because you're there. Because there's security there. There's protection there. There's guidance there. There's love there. There's spiritual nourishment there. Anybody can put up four walls and a roof. Ooh, you understand? So yeah, it would help though. I've had situations to where like, I'm, I've been in an apartment twice and I've had multiple women in an apartment because we building up to something. So we gotta thug it out. Now, with that, you may not have the privacy all the time like you would like. You know, King David had all his wives in a cave. And I believe when it was all said and done, he had 18 wives, 18 women he dealt with. They were all in the cave. So don't let no one tell you you need to be in the magnificent mansion like Solomon to house your wives. No, that's not true. And typically that comes from a woman. And again, stop listening to the women, bro. If you're listening to a woman on how to come into this lifestyle, you're already off to a wrong, a very terrible start. She don't know herself. And again, she's unexperienced. Inexperienced, rather. On that note, some people will proceed to tell you that you need to have a lot of money in order to have this lifestyle. Now, mind you, too, this is coming from people, typically women, who have never seen this lifestyle. But he needs to be able to afford it. Sweetheart. I mean, truth be told, you, you cause him so much grief and misery. He really can't afford you. Because truly, you can't put a price on the peace of mind. Let's start there. 
Was it not Solomon who said that it's better to live in an attic by yourself than in a mansion with a nagging woman? <laughs> so already he can't afford you and you got the nerve to want to tell him what he needs to have in his pocket to get somebody maybe better than you. Again, unqualified. And man, I'm going to tell you, no, you don't need to play with a large bank account because what will happen is you'll, get, you'll be given into the temptation to lead with your wallet. And you don't ever want to do that. You don't want to lead with your wallet. You don't want to lead with your penis or your libido or your sex. You don't want to lead with, with force or intimidation. You don't want to lead by any of those things. Because whatever you lead by, when it fluctuates, they out the gate. You need to lead by what they cannot take away what they didn't give you lead by what the most high has given you your purpose you understand me they can never i don't care what you are they can strip away everything you have this court system is jerry rigged for that it falsely empowers the women all women into thinking that they have a power they really don't but they believe it and don't get me wrong the power though false is very real so when she gets a hit of that, she can't give it back. Oh, it's very hard. So it's designed to strip and break you down to the point where you want to be a man going your own way. Or you don't want to deal with no woman. And the only person that wins is the devil because now you cannot be fruitful and multiply. Don't do that. No matter what they take from you, bro, you never let a woman humble you. It's unnatural. Get up. That's what you lead with your purpose. You came with your purpose, you leave with your purpose. You don't need a large amount of money. You need a decent amount of money. Truth be told, the devil's children have a lot of excess. Y'all's children, we we don't have a lot of excess. So, you know, you got a few rare instances, but what, I, what I've discovered in my lifetime and my walk with him, he gives us enough just like he did when we were, in, um, when we were leaving Egypt. We ate day by day. Give us this day our daily bread. When we start trying to uh, uh, stack it up and, and, and rack it up for all of this, then we get over to the spirit of gluttony. We start being led by riches and not by faith. We start trusting in our wealth and, and not the doctor who gives our health, you know? So for what I've discovered in my walk, and maybe you've uh, you know seen something a little different, and that's okay. But he's not going to give us uh, an abundance, not to the point where it corrupts us it's gonna be just enough so if you realize in your life right now man you got your whip you got your car you know you got your little spot you got you some type of uh, uh, ways to make your money whether it's nine to five or independent it don't matter but you're good got your couple cards to play with to charge something off on that's really all you need because let me tell you something the woman coming in needs to upgrade or help to upstage what you already provided she should not be coming in and all of a sudden you got a $800 hit in your bank account. Bow! She should not be coming in and you should be feeling those type of financial woes. She's supposed to uplift what you've already been gifted with. If she ain't adding, she's subtracting, cuz. So you don't need a crazy amount of money for her to come in and deplete. Don't, don't believe that. And the more she comes in with, in the form of things that you didn't create, children for instance she ought to be coming in with something that offsets that here i have children but this is what i get for them it's yours because she she'll put the responsibilities of the kids on you but not the rewards not the benefits you need all of that now i'm telling you i'm telling you men the day is here where you have the height of these women reaching us quote unquote independence and when they get to the mountaintop they're tired then you see what's going out in the land right now right ain't nobody see but especially if you're a woman because i don't care how much of a man you think you are i don't care how much you dress up in in baggy jeans and in polo button-ups and got your body all tatted you ain't no man and you ain't never put the fear of Yah and a man. So we get to Isaiah chapter 4 verse 1. And I've, I've made a video breaking this down deeper. But we're going to read it for face value. Because sometimes you got to do it. If it applies of course. It says in that day seven women will take hold of one man. And say we will eat our own food and provide our own clothes. So these are independent women. <laughs> because kept women 
are kept by the husbands. They don't have the means to do that because he does that. But anyhow, only let us be called by your name because why? What's in the name? Protection. Providing, but they provide it for themselves, which is why they're telling you, hey, we got to have the pie. We already have this. We just need what we can't do. And here is the protection. Let us be called by your name. That's why your apartment is better than her apartment, because your apartment is called by your name. Her apartment is called by no name. Her apartment is seen as a woman who is there by herself with two, three, four kids. And come on, cuz. Nobody's thinking twice about running up in a woman's spot when they don't case the joint and only she's there. Only she's there with her children. Now when they see a man coming and going, don't let him look like a fit man. <laughs> don't let him have a gun print. They think a little twice or they stop thinking and just move on. So when I tell you men to know your value, these are the things you must take into consideration and without knowing your father's word, you wouldn't know what time we were in. In First Chronicles, Chapter 12, verse 32, it reads, From Issachar, men who understood the times. And I'm going to stop there. Are you a man who understands the time we're in and what type of time you need to be on and they can therefore let your woman know how she's to proceed in dealing with you with that time so that she graces it and does not waste it? But I tell you, even if you have the money, even if you have the home, even if you have the transportation, even if you have the throne for another woman, if you don't have the most high, if you're not being led by his Ruach Kakodesh, his Holy Spirit, if you haven't had your mind transformed and renewed in the name of Yahshua, you don't need to be with a second woman. You don't need to even be with the first woman, bro. Hear me out. If you're going through that process of truly becoming the most alpha version of who you are and you can't do that without the physician himself you can't do that with not looking at the first alpha and that's the most high you got no business right now i should experiment with anybody's daughter anybody's ma mother sister auntie cousin get yourself right first seek his kingdom first and all these things should be added unto your thought that's how you know if you're ready that's how you know. And when the floodgates open, they're going to come chickling in. It's just going to be a thing of where you just check off marks. Does she meet this? Does she meet that? Does she meet that? Because you are already the constant. You're not the variable. She's the variable. You know what you're going to do. You don't know what she's going to do. But you have had to have been able to perfect that continually and have made it to the point where you are the best state, the best fees, the best sheep. Anytime my women meet me and get with me, <laughs> they got me at the state of the art They never had to get with me And had to wait for me to mature to do Nope And if you're a true man of y'all You come ready for the job What job? Any job We can do all things to Yahshua Who strengthens us brothers So I can go deeper I don't want to drag this lesson on This video on uh, longer than it needs to be Man, if y'all got any questions, like I said before, drop them in the comment section. Let's continue this dialogue, you know. If you got something that I possibly missed, put that in the, um, the comment section too, yeah. And as always, man, share this message. It's for free, you know. Say it like my brothers. What this dick? Yeah. She says she want to be up on my team, but she can't love me, yeah. Really, she don't want a man. She want to gummy bear.